Hello, my name is Cassidy Anderson, and welcome to my senior project podcast on how to create an animation. I have with me Pixar animator John C.C. Lee. He's worked in the Pixar animation department for a grand total of 13 years and has animated many of their famous films. Some of them include Ratatouille, Monsters University, and Coco. And he's won an Annie Award for Outstanding Achievement for Character Animation in Coco. How are you doing today, Mr. Lee? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for letting me interview you. So, my first question is, what do you think are the most crucial elements for developing characters? Um, I think creating character has to be from your heart. It has to be personal, or, or there would be a disconnect from you and the character design. So, I mean, it has to be personal to you, so then you know all the characteristics, all the certain acting choices that a character would do, what, it, or he, what he or she would do in a certain situation character has to support the story so story is very important your character has to follow a certain arc throughout the journey of the film um, usually start from point A to B your character would have evolved into something that's different and then sometimes design just comes very personally like some people like angular angular edges some people are like very loose lines so also it's a style of the film that you need to design the camp, the, cam, uh, the character has to complement. So it, it's, I think it has to be personal. That's my main thing. So my second question is similar to the first one. What do you think is the most important components for creating a story? Well, oh, that's a tough one. Um, I think a good story has to have an arc, like a progression, like you've, you, you've changed or the character has changed throughout the journey. So if a story where a character doesn't really learn anything and at the end of the day, you know, he, the character's still the same way with no goals. The one thing about, you gotta have a goal in the story. Like, you gotta establish a goal so then the audience will know what the character's trying to achieve at the beginning to set up for all the obstacles, you know, the character would go through in a story. And then that's when the outcome would pay off. It has to be entertaining, you know, like no one wants, a movie that nothing really happens, you know. Yeah, main thing, like, I'm into character stuff, so having a good arc on a character is very important for me, personally, story. Also, again, has to come from you. A story has to come from, like, past experiences, you know, things you've learned in your life that some people, you know, put it, put it out in the story that way. And, you know, it's, dude, that's when it gets emotional. And, and, you know, that's what it takes, I think. All right. My third question is, can you tell me about the programs and equipment that you use to animate? Well, when I started off, it was just paper. So straight up just flipping paper. So I went to school to nine, in the 90s, late 90s, I want to say. And then all we, we had was like a camera and pieces of paper that you flip. And then each page, you shoot a drawing. You play it, and we actually had VCR tapes. I don't know if anyone still knows what that is. Like tapes, not 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 there's nothing digital. We didn't even have iPhone, so we would just loop the animation and camera and press record while it was playing, and then we would submit the assignment to the teacher. So um, then it slowly evolved into more things like Photoshop, um, After Effects. We were using After Effects a lot. And then when I started working, I did Toon Boom, which is like a flash animation program, which it's kind of like moving objects, like separate pieces of objects you translate, you can rotate and stuff like that. But then, yeah, then I got into uh, CG computer animation and I started using Maya. And Maya is just a, such a powerful program. I mean, CG animation, 2D animation, they're like two separate mediums, but you still making animation with it. So I was very interested in that. Um, yeah, so I was using Maya for early in my career. Um, and every studio has their own kind of tools that was added on top of the, your basic stock Maya to make, make it better. Because you can, you can program a lot of stuff on top of it to the studios, so to this particular studio's needs. So after that, I went then I got a job at Pixar, and Pixar uses their own 
proprietary software. So they develop their own software, their rendering software, and we still kind of use Maya too. And then we also use a 2D program called TV Paint, which is a pretty cool 2D online program you can draw with your tablet. There, there's been shorts made there with that program. You can paint, redo timing, clean up drawings, shoot drawings in twos and fours and whatever you like it, and you can actually make a whole film with it. So, two, actually 2D is kind of making a comeback because it's so much more convenient to use. So you can grab a tablet, use your iPad, you can use a Wacom. So, yeah, no more days of carrying like a thousand sheets of paper with you and hopefully don't you don't lose it or like get it wet <laughs> or like you know we used to like photocopy the sheets if like one drawing got to really crumble down so back then it was just made, what much harder to get access oh, back then. and then do you have any words of wisdom or advice for first time animators starting animation you're gonna make mistakes so just keep making mistakes keep drawing uh, keep studying, look at animations that you love, look at animation, look at live action, um, study how things move, like uh, study of all bounds, like how does, how does a heavy object move compared to a light object, you know, um, you can get more advanced, like look at physicality, how does a person run, a certain weight lift, uh, then you can get into acting, like look at your favorite actors, look at films, you know, cool, like just cool animation acting that you've seen in the films that you like, you know, study that, so like frame by frame it, you know, really like kind of geek out over it, you know? So I think the main thing is just, just keep making mistakes, keep, keep practicing. I mean, you're gonna do probably like 30 shot, bad shots before you get one good shot. So, you know, it's just, it just takes time. It's just one of those things like, it's hard, it's hard to learn in a day because there's just so much things to learn. So I'm still learning. There are days on the shot, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. So, you know, then I look at references. I, you know, look at my favorite artists and I, I ask my colleagues, people I admire, you know, that's important too. Like if you have a question to ask, you know, especially this day and age, the internet is so convenient. You can get access to YouTube, you know, you can message somebody. Instagram is huge to get a hold of artists to ask for their wisdom. So, yeah. And that concludes my senior project podcast on how to create an animation. Thank you again, Mr. Lee, and thank you to all who have tuned in. Yeah, thanks for having me.